this light. It's like, it's like my glasses are like glaring. It's terrible. I've got to get used to these. Um, look, it's like I have like rings in here. Oh my gosh, how am I gonna deal with that? There's a reflection of my glasses in this. Okay. All right, come come sit on your um come sit on your stool. This is the um did you get your papers? Okay. Guys, as you pop on here, hey Pammy, as you pop on here, um There's Blair. Here, see look. look. Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> that looks what's that um What's that app that uh, Snapchat? Uh, look, I got Google eyes. <laughs> okay. We have a lot of questions. Now, here's the funny thing. Jean doesn't know. This is really, it's not Ask Amy and Jean. <clears throat> it's Ask Jean. No, it's not. No. <laughs> I assure you, she's got answers. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, hey, Carmelina. Hey, Michelle. Hey, guys. Okay, we've, we've got to get started because we've got a lot of questions. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll read them. This is the piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. And thanks, guys. Y'all are just awesome. Like, I love how we, we thought, how can we let our knowledge mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. doing, re, mm -hmm. redoing furniture, flipping mm -hmm. furniture for so long, mm -hmm. help our followers? And a lot of y'all don't know, but Jean actually refinished furniture before we even met. For years and years and years. Yes. But nothing was painted. Everything was stained. So it's a... Till he met it me. It was a new world when I met her. You thought it was sacrilege, didn't you? Oh, huh, you just don't paint mahogany. But that was the old school. The plaster master. The plaster master. Ah. Jean is the plaster master. Gosh, we look so, I'm, I've been up for two days, just so y'all know. Tell them why. Why? Because you can't sleep. I can't sleep. <laughs> I can't turn it off. Yes, Michelle, Jean is the plaster master. Hey, Stella, hey guys. Okay, so we've got to ask some of these questions. Okay. If you are watching, and if we see something and we feel like we can answer it to be able to help you, and, and here's the deal. We have been refinishing and painting furniture for forever like forever, from how, probably is the age of many of you watching <laughs> have been. So we've run into some issues and dilemmas that we wanna be able to help you through that process and it's mm -hmm. kind of part of the reason why we develop products. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is one. Um, from Jamie. From Jamie Kirk. And this one is not a technical question, but more a design question. More as an so, aesthetic. So I will digress to you. Okay, so let's do this. Um, and I think I'm a little crazy, so that's okay, because I really want y'all to be in on this as far as your learning. Can you see that piece right there? This is on my laptop. This, is, this piece is what we're talking about right now. Okay, so Jean, um, and this will probably be on the Facebook group, so they can see this. Mm -hmm. Tell us what kind of wood this is and what you think, um, which, uh, we, Jamie, we get as excited as you guys because nothing is better than a find. You know, we never talk about, we never talk about, um, we never tell people how much things cost unless it was like a bargain or we got it for free or we were a curbside shopper. So, um, hey, sweet Brenda. Hey, Dontra. Yes. Okay, so tell us about this piece. It is, well, it's What gone. happened? No, hold on. There it is. Okay, let me blow it up. Don't, oh. We're going to be here for the next probably three or four hours, so just forget the debate. We're just all going to talk about furniture. Oh, my <laughs> Oh, what happened? I've... It's not letting you zoom it up. So let's just talk no. about it, right, like this one. Okay. All right, so the question is, um, talking more about pieces, their value. This is um, a buffet that mm -hmm, she got. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, it's okay on here, Jamie. It's all about enjoying the bragging rights. And, hey, Amanda, 
So you can tell us what you paid for something on here, especially if it was if it was a really good buy. That's what we all want to know because this is we're all part of the same tribe as far as um wanting to really celebrate one another. So it's okay if you got it for like twenty five dollars or a hundred dollars or whatever. Um, share that with us, she and we celebrate. More. She may have paid more. Well, the wood, since you asked me that and not let me answer, it's, uh, it is, it looks to be mahogany or walnut. It's hard to tell because the picture's so small it won't let me blow it up. And the, that it's veneered, and the reason you can tell is because there's matching uh, designs in the grain, which they call that a... Continue. They call that uh, crotch mahogany which they take that from the middle of the wood and you get that beautiful grain pattern that you see in the panels of the doors and then that matching pattern where the handles of the drawers are. Okay, so did y'all get that? Jean, how, tell us again where they know, as far as how do you know if a piece is veneer or if it's solid wood? Well, <clears throat> what, well that's a long story. The, you can tell this is veneer because you cannot get the pattern that mm -hmm. you see in the mm -hmm. doors and drawers mm -hmm. without it being veneer. Right. And veneer is not a, not a bad thing. It's not a dirty word. No. It's what's under the veneer makes it good or bad. You know, this piece is probably from the, I don't know, 30s or 40s. Mm -hmm. uh, the design, it's a reproduction, has uh, the Queen Anne cabrio legs with the ball and claw. Uh, the top has a, you know, it almost has a little bit of an empire look to it, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but it looks like to be a very functional piece. And um, so here's a question that a lot of people ask: Should I paint this piece? Again, it depends on what you want to do with this. This is if you want to, uh, and this again, this goes more design oriented, and, and as Amy is. Um, told me I'm not a designer so I don't know that I'm qualified we do to have this that. conversation from time to time when and sometimes it gets into a heated discussion and that's mm -hmm. when I'll tell him Gene I'm the designer and you are the engineer yes the how and the why. so in it, here's the question I would ask do I paint or do I uh, refinish and have it stain if you're using this in your house does it go with the rest of the decor and if it's if it looks more dated mm -hmm. then yes paint it so mm -hmm. that it blends in better and have the freedom to paint it and know that it's going to be okay right and, and nobody's going to judge you but if you've gotten this to resell if this is something that you're going to turn around and resell it you know, then the question is, does it have more value as a refinished piece that's been, that's stained and, or does it have more value to be painted? And that's a difficult question because a lot of times it depends on what your customer's taste are. So I don't know what to tell you without knowing a lot more information. About okay, now on Jamie's, on this piece that you can see on Facebook, guys, because we're talking about this veneered crotch mahogany um, piece. Jean is guessing dates probably from the 30s. She has one more question, or he. Um, I am gel staining a beautiful table I just bought to sell. So they're, re they're flipping. You know, our rule around here is we say, if your furniture flipping, don't ever spend over $100 and you wanna make sure that you're paying yourself at least $75 to $100 an hour if you're flipping furniture. Okay, so I want the gel stain, I wanna gel stain it with the Kensington Black and I'm wondering what sealer to use over the top of the table to protect the finish. Well, and again, questions being, Jamie, is, is this piece unfinished? And it's, uh, and when I mean unfinished, there's not a clear coating on it and you're staining it for the first time or it's been stripped and you're going to stain it or does the piece already have a clear finish on it and you want to go over it with the with the kensington black gel stain and if it's the latter if you're going over a clear finish you do not want to put this on thick because it will crack and peel yes it has to it's be been finished it's been it has finished. been finished so you're going to clean slate it 
-hmm. and you're going to put the 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 stain on very thin now mm -hmm. what's going to happen is you're not going to get a solid black finish this is not mm -hmm. going to be opaque mm -hmm. the the original color is going to still come through the kensington which can be a good thing is going to darken it almost mm -hmm. like an overglaze mm -hmm. but you want to put it on thin let it dry overnight and the sealer let it dry overnight And the matte sealer would go over that, and yes, you can use the matte the matte sealer. Just follow the directions on the matte sealer, uh, and that'll give you a uh, a water based clear coat on that. Love that. Okay, I love this question, um, Anton Anthony. That sounds like a movie star's name, Anton. doesn't it? Anton Anthony. Yes, you need to win an Academy Award because that name is. Uh, a million dollar name. Okay, guys. I'm jumping on the Amy and Jean train. Woo woo! <laughs> What's in that mug? It's just tea. I haven't slept in two days. Long Island tea. Okay. Um, laugh out loud. I think I'm the only guy here. No, <laughs> Anton, you're not the only guy here. And there are other guys that are furniture refinishers. Okay. Um, my question is, um, you've just painted your kitchen cabinets, and would you glaze, would you use a glaze on the cabinets? That's a design question. I would have a tendency to say it depends on the look that you're going for. Now, y'all know how I feel when you are doing your kitchen cabinets. What do I always tell you to do is go to Habitat, go to Goodwill, and get a cabinet door. And I want you to paint the cabinet door and I want you to experiment. If you want to, if you only have one cabinet door, then tape it and then that way you can look at two or three different looks. Mm -hmm. So that way you could do a light and a dark wax on it. Um, you can do a glaze on it. I'll even come back and wax over after I do a glaze. And as a rule, I don't know if y'all remember when we talk about doing glazes over the one step, it's one part paint, one part one, one part one step, one part glaze and one part glazed over. Would you say two parts water? Or are you okay with just sticking them with the one, one, one? I like the one, one, one. One, one, one. It's a good thing to remember. And then that way, um, if you wanna be able to thin it down, you can. A lot of it is gonna be your comfort level. We had we had our Cherbourg house that was on the cover. I'll brag just a second. Is that, that's really tacky, isn't it? That was long ago. Okay, so because it was a long time ago, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So our house was on the cover of Traditional Home. We were so jazzed. We didn't know it was gonna be on the cover. They had come and shot it and did tell us that it was gonna be 11 or 12 pages. And you can look it up, um, Amy and Jean Howard. It, Jean, Jean does live there too, or did live there too. <laughs> And it was on the cover of Traditional Home, and our kitchen cabinets were done in milk paint. And they, we call it a Toscana milk paint finish. Old world. Old world. And everybody would come in that kitchen and be like, oh my gosh, I love these kitchen cabinets. And we made them raw in our wood shop. When we used to make furniture. When we used to make furniture. So my thought is, I would love for you to play... Um, Mr. Anthony, I would like for you to play with doing the one step and doing maybe some milk paint over the one step, antiquing it and pulling it off and then waxing it and see um, what it looks like. All right, um, Joan Woodward, Woodard, that, that sounds like a movie star's name. What mm -hmm. is this? Is this like Hollywood on here tonight? Joan Woodard, how do tiles on a black spot on a backsplash look painted. I'm thinking um, that I watered down the paint. That's technical, okay. Uh, no, you do not have to water down the paint to paint your backsplash. Uh, clean slate first. Again, clean slate gets all the grease grime, especially if it's behind uh, uh, the sink or the, the uh, stove or um, th where there could be something there that would prevent the one step from, well, I got a booger in my nose. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Okay. <laughs> and then you can just apply it. And it's better to use two thin coats than one thick coat. I'm going to tell you something, though. Not knowing the tile, I'm, I'm thinking the tile in the kitchen. One, it could be a glazed tile. It mm -hmm. could be a porous tile. 
Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't used our lacquer, our, our lacquer is a aerosol spray nitrocellulose lacquer that you can use on ceramic tile. Um, and it's fabulous. It's fabulous, isn't it? It, it can make, like, let's say you buy an older home and it's from the set, like, well, no, even go back further than that, 40s or 50s or 60s, and it's got mm -hmm. ugly tile in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You can, that wall tile especially, you can come back and lacquer over it with the white lacquer and it looks mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. But you can paint the backsplash in your kitchen with the one-step paint, absolutely. Yes. And you probably want to seal it, not because it has to be, but because... If it's going to be where there's water splashing or it's behind the stove it's where it's, it's easier to keep clean uh, so that you'd be able to, to wipe it down easier and that way it won't stain. So here's another question. Lisa's asking, um, can I paint travertine tiles and grout in my bathroom and I want to lighten it up? Um, I say, are there baths in the game? <laughs> um, so the answer, again, can you paint travertine tiles? Now, the travertine tiles could have a glaze on top of them, possibly. They're well, not is this, honed is or... This, is this wall tile or floor tile? Lisa, is this wall tile or floor tile? Gosh, I should have done my hair before we went live. Mm, yeah, uh, I forgot to color mine. So the travertine tiles, what was our question? Can she paint them? I know, but what did we just ask her? If it's floor or wall tile. Oh, that's right. Sorry. There's a big, big difference. If you're, if it's your floor tile, keep in mind that's going to get a lot of traffic. But, okay. Uh, it's going to get a lot of traffic on that floor. So keep in mind that area is going to wear more. Uh, it's going to show stains more. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to think about is that something I want? Uh, yes, you can paint it. Uh, I would recommend to... Doing one or the other would really change it up a lot. Yeah, you could Share use pictures it. of it on here. What you could do is paint the wall a complementary color to the floor tile. You're doing good. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm doing design. So here's, here was the dilemma, and I'm going to use this as um, an example, Lisa. With our house, you know that we just got through painting... We had a lot of brick everywhere. And people were like, oh, it's brick, don't paint it. And it was like, but we had brick floor, like brick pavers. Walkways, stairs. Stairs. Fence. Fences, and the house. It was too much brick. So we just painted the house itself. And then now the walls, the brick walls around the house and the pavers, they all look a lot better. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so happy. So that's something that I really would like for you to think about. Don't think about painting all of it because that's what you've got. You could have it to wear as Jean now is going into the design mode that you could paint the walls. Hmm. Okay. Um, if, if, technical, okay. if you do the floors, I would recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, to put the matte sealer for water base, but if you want real durability, polyurethane, an um, oil-based polyurethane, because that will, st you, it's a trade-off. Oil-based, you, you heard that. Yeah, there's a trade-off. Our matte sealer is a water-based water <laughs> poly, and it is not as durable, although it's durable, it's not as durable as the old base polyurethanes, mm -hmm. and they do make a polyurethane that is a water clear, so that it won't yellow the um, the paint. We have three dogs mm -hmm. running around us, and our cat is outside, so um, so that's that that's the reason for the the madness. The hoot nanny. The hoot nanny. Okay. Um, Linda Stafford Larry, we see her name a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I have a huge fiddle fig plant that goes outside for the summer. If I paint the pot with one step for the Turkish pot look, do I wax it or not? I know you do not wax. I think, will the finish hold up outside? And I love the Turkish pot look. Thanks in advance. Mm -hmm. You tell me. <laughs> Here's what a lot of people don't realize is that you can 
put wax on a finish and have it outside. Uh -huh. You're not putting the wax, a lot of people are thinking the sun's gonna melt it. You're putting on a very thin application of wax. Mm -hmm. this, guys, here, here's something that we need to remember. Let's go back through history of all of the furniture and the things that we have, a lot of the antiques in our home. Mm -hmm. They weren't putting poly on them. They weren't putting um, Lacquer. lacquers. They weren't, those products hadn't been developed. Mm -hmm. What were they using? They were using caseins, which is milk-based paints. They were, um, of course, they did have stains. There was a lot of oxidation processes going on as far, but there were, there were stains. Um, but they were sealing them with waxes. And the waxes in themselves, the, the, the longer a wax is on a piece, the harder it gets. Mm -hmm. The more it cures. The longer it cures, the harder the shell and the protection that it gets. And so the patina to that piece gets better and better and better with time. And I'm sorry for the glare. I'm just looking. It's like we've both got circles, <laughs> and then we look at the, the laptop. So I apologize if that's a distraction. Okay. Um, so the answer to Linda's question is, yes, you can use the one step. Always clean with the clean slate before because we don't know where it's been. We don't know what's on it. And um, I would probably do a really thin application of the Mondrome Beeswax on it. I wouldn't buff it a lot. Here's where the difference is. It's protecting it from water, but you don't have to buff it. Hmm. You don't have to buff the wax to have a sheen if you don't want to. Right, it'll stay matte. Yes, it will stay matte. But you can't, and you can use it outside. And I have a, I, I wish you could tell me how to make our, our fiddle fig tree live because ours is dying. It's right behind us. That's because the cat gets in it and poops. No. Yes. For real? Yes. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, all right, so hold on. We, we did have a lot of questions. I just want to make sure. If I paint my floor tile, what do I do about the grout between the lines? Paint it. You do. You paint it. You act like it's not even there. It's... I know, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people that are mm -hmm. hearing that. But the good thing about it is it just kind of goes away and it has this solid look. Mm -hmm. And the one step is gonna bind to that. Clean, make sure you clean it with the, the um, clean slate first. It will bind to that and it will look beautifully. Um, it will look beautiful. All right, um, what was another question that you had, baby? Here's a good one. Dondra, um, these people, we have such smart followers. Y'all are awesome. Um, Oh my gosh, Jean, there's a Fiddle Leaf Fig Facebook group. Oh my gosh. Maggie, does anybody have, did they say that their cat poops in their, their Fiddle Fig? And so, in, in the bucket. I just found that out tonight. We have burlap over it. We didn't have because the cat was <laughs> I had no idea. Okay. Dondra's, Dondra's asking, how much? The, the cat's out there. Guys, Excuse I'm so me. sorry. The cat is right outside the door. So we've got two Cavaliers and a Great Pyrenees that are trying to, um, trying to get the cat. Okay. Dondra's asking, Jean, how do you determine how much milk paint you need for a particular piece of furniture? Well, it's It's done by square footage. You measure the piece of furniture and you get the square footage and a bag of milk paint will cover about, oh, I wanna say about 15 square feet. 18. 18 square feet in a bag of milk paint. And that's one coat. That is one coat. And you'll be really surprised when you apply the milk paint, it's gonna go on really watery thin but it's going to dry opaque and look. What? Oh, yes, cats and dogs. Here's the group. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to look at that later. All right, where's your papers that you had some of the questions printed off? Well, you have most of them. Some of these people emailed these in. So you've answered that one, that one. Okay. There's this one. 
Okay, Diane Brown is asking, how do you determine the age and the quality of a piece? Dovetails and secondary woods. That is a class all in itself, and I'm talking about a semester yes. of class. Yes. Uh, it is not something you can learn overnight. It's There are multiple, multiple things to look for, uh, and it, it just it does take some, some training and experience to learn that. Let's talk, you two. I'm, I'm going to have to let the cat in before they tear the doors up. I'll... You talk to everybody about stained furniture, woods, dovetailing drawers, that type okay. of thing. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the menagerie. Uh, let's see. Where did she get? Uh... Okay, here's a good question. This is from Rita. And Rita says that she has a huge desk, but she cannot make the top coat of one step uh, smooth and she tried all kinds of brushes, rollers, added paint, mist, etc. And uh, Rita, there's two ways to do this. Uh, one way that'll help uh, is that even though you do not have to do this, this will help smooth it out. It won't be perfect, but it will be much better and that's to sand it. But know that if you sand, you must wear a N95 or better dust mask or respirator because of the when you start sanding the one step paint, you start releasing all of the uh, particles and you do not want to be inhaling that because it's just not good for your for your lungs. So if you will sand in between coats, that will smooth it. Another way to do it is to get a paint sprayer and spray it. Spray it will give you the smoothest finish of any of the uh, application techniques. So hopefully that'll answer that question for okay, you. Okay, so what were you just talking about? Uh, this one asking me what, what it would cost for me to go work for them. Okay, this is next. <laughs> oh, let's see, fig tree and gel stain, we got that one. Milk paint. Uh, oh, here's one. This one's similar technical, to Diane's. Technical. Yeah, it's a, and it's from Gretchen, and she's saying in choosing what finish to use, how do you determine the type of wood a piece is made from after it is stripped? Uh, Gretchen, again, that's similar to Diane's. That is a, a a class within itself of learning wood species. Could we could we help them with that? Um, no, not without having classes. And, uh, the best thing to do would be to Google pictures of wood species, so that you can see, and it'll help. But even then, it's it's just a lot of experience and learning what the basics like oak, mahogany, uh, cherry, well, let's, walnut, birch. Let's park for just a minute. Do you? I know you love me. Let's park for just a minute. Oh, I'm stoned. <laughs> If from most people that are going to watch this later, mm -hmm. let's say they're going to an antique mall, mm -hmm. like a real antique mall, mm -hmm. like there's real antiques there, mm -hmm. um, like our little place on summer. Have y'all ever seen a shop at our little place on summer? It's it's a lot of fun. That's not antiques. <laughs> That's that, it. Kind of is. No, it's quite long. So, well, let's, but where the where the average person is going to go to be able to find their piece? As a rule, you're talking about pieces that are probably from 1890, maybe, but primarily 20s, 30s, 40s. Not, not, it's not, not the long summer. Jeez, excuse Thank me. You. Thank you. It, so let's say. More like 50s and 60s and 70s. Okay, so. Read the tag. The tag will usually <laughs> say what it's made of. What kind of woods are we talking about? In, in the 20s and 30s, as a rule, if something's from the 20s or 30s or 40s, what kind of woods are, are the majority of them going to be made out of? Oak. Yes. Mahogany. Yes. And walnut. Those Oak, mahogany, and walnut. And so that's why maple. the date and the maple. Mm -hmm. Um, maple is going to be a tighter grain. Mm -hmm. Oak is going to be a, a more open grain. It's going to be more difficult to paint. Maple is going to be very smooth. Oak is going to be very grainy, uh, very open grain, coarse grain. Mahogany as well. Walnut, 
to extent will be grainy as well. Here's something else you need to remember. When you're working with woods, when you're especially when you're painting pieces that are mm -hmm. that have cherry and mahogany. Cherries are smooth. Yes. There's a lot of tannins in it. There's a lot of tannins in oak, a lot of tannins in cherry, uh, not so much maple, not so much birch. So what you're gonna experience sometimes is what we call a bleed through or... Especially in cherry. A cherries and mahoganies. So yeah. um, the tannins will have a lot of times, like you'll put on a coat of, let's say, linen or Bauhaus buff or French, usually when it's on your whites, and you'll see little red dots um, come through. And so the percentage of the time is maybe 20 to 30% of the time that they may show through because of the tannins. Mm -hmm, at least. And so I would never worry with it. I would go in and paint it, and if I saw them popping through, then I would stop. I'd finish that coat get one coat on it, mm -hmm. and then come back and seal it with shellac, and then, or the even matte sealer, I've done that too. Well, you could do that first, before you even I knew it. you were gonna say that. Yeah, okay, well, but save, save the trouble. You're saying that they can do that first, before mm -hmm. they actually paint yeah, it. you can put a coat of matte sealer on first to seal that, so that it, when you put on a water-based product, it's gonna pull those It's tannins. drawing that. That yeah. The paint will draw that, but the matte sealer seals that so that when you put the paint on, it won't draw up through the uh, through the paint. Can you help Maggie really quickly? Um, go okay. They want us to go to an antique store and show them the different species of woods. Hmm. Okay. We can do that. Yeah. If y'all can't tell. <laughs> um. Gene is an introvert and I am an extrovert. I am the wow and he is the how. So he is this engineer brain. He's really thinking and when he's answering a question, he's like really thinking. Like he's wanting to make sure he tells you the right thing. So does this wear you out? No. <laughs> what do you think I'm gonna lie? <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, I love that idea, Debbie. We're gonna go to a high-end antique store and we're gonna walk through and that way we can help y'all. All right, so. There's one from Jeannie. What do you want now? What is the wood they use in the new companies? Meaning like if there are new companies making wood. You don't make wood. Um, or not making wood, making furniture. Oh, wood for new guys. They could use so many Part, You'll be surprised so much if it's of, really, really uh, heavy. Most of it's particle board. It's veneered now, and it's got chipboard or particle board mm -hmm. um, uh, substrate. And they can use so, so many different kinds of woods because veneer is very inexpensive for, mm -hmm. you know, for your main, your main species, cherry, mahogany, walnut. So it it's just could be the gamut. Uh, what you don't see are the exotic woods. And that was something that we did a lot when we had our furniture company. A lot of you may not know, but we manufactured furniture for 20, 23 years, yeah, like 23 that. years. Um, we made for F. Schumacher, Robert Allen. We had 23 showrooms around the country and we manufactured a lot of exotic wood pieces of furniture. Mm -hmm. Don't you wish we had more furniture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. We got a few pieces. Um, because we're we're snobs when it comes t to woods mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. finishes and, um, and the quality of it mm -hmm. and just the beauty of the finish that can be married with different mm -hmm. pieces mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what something that we try to share with y'all when we go shopping and different pieces as you learn a repertoire of finishes in my old world finishing course they know this um, it's about learning enough different finishes, whether it's milk paint, whether it's lacquer, whether it's one step and glazes and all that type of thing, and incorporating different products to get that look, you can um, have a repertoire of different finishes that you can do <clears throat> and create. The wheels are always turning in his head. Mm -hmm. They're rusty too. <laughs> okay, 
Um, I love this. Debbie's asking, um, can you also examine the furniture to determine its age? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of factors. Great question. That. A lot love of that. factors. So what can they look at? Uh, you, you know, the drawers, the kind of wood they used for the drawers, uh, their dovetail. There's different kinds of dovetail. It's not just the standard a dovetail like we think about today. There were so many different types of dovetails and how they created the dovetail. Uh, you can look at the interior. Was that their signature sometimes? Mm, no, it was more the it was more about uh, the dating. You can you can it helps to date a piece as to how the dovetails were created. Um, then you can also look when you take the drawers out and look inside the framework of the piece, that will help. The back of the piece uh, will tell a story sometimes. Uh, so just a lot of different uh, ways of, of looking at it to see, uh, could determine what that age is. Even- And the design of the piece as well. Um, our dogs have no manners, I'm so sorry. Um, the other thing is like a lot of the really old antique pieces that we have, the drawers are multiple sheets of wood, multiple pieces of wood in the bottom. It's not one solid piece. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sometimes they did that way as well. We're gonna have to go shopping and we're gonna have to be able to share with you a little bit about um, design, cabriole legs, knowing most pieces as far as the period when that piece was made. There's a lot here that we could teach you that we've really never gone into a whole lot about furniture, design, construction, that type thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Which has not always been the, um, the necessity for putting the finish on. No, but I think I agree with all of y'all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Randy, I'm we're sorry, seeing Randy. it's like out of control. These guys are just out of control. <laughs> Kathy, I am so sorry. Y'all are trying to listen and learn something. <laughs> and I wish this precious, sweet um, Theo. Theo, somebody, Dondra, she knows Theo. That our, that, this is our precious, great um, Pyrenees. He's, he's our brand new puppy. Um, he's out of control. <laughs> Alright, so um, let me see. Did we go over, do you think, this was an interesting question. Deborah was saying, my question is, do you have any product that can be used to update or change a color in an area rug? This is a true story. You know what I'm gonna say? This woman had painted a piece of furniture and she was so pleased with how it turned out. And um, she was admiring her work and forgot to tightly secure um, the top and it spilled over into the semi shag carpet that she had on the floor. And she said, what do I do to take it out? And Jean said, get some scissors and cut, cut out a patch because it isn't coming out. Or paint the whole thing. <laughs> you can thin down a lot of, if you've, if, if, if you've ever seen this on our blog post and things, but you can take the one step paint and you can take canvas. Uh, we do tote bags. I've done um, mm -hmm. pillowcases. I've done towel, like um, different towels, not like a towel that you bathe, that you dry yourself off with, but like um, tea towels and- mm -hmm. Decorative. Decorative things yes. and linens. And you can thin the paint um, about one part paint to three parts water. So one part one step paint to three parts water. And then you can literally, I've done ombre effects. I'll dip it down in there so I could have multi colors of pink or blue or gray or whatever. So you can use the one step paint on pieces that you could paint. And we have actually stenciled and done designs on natural fiber rugs like sisal, seagrass. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the one step is perfect on it because it doesn't have an acrylic type, um, it's not an acrylic type finish. It's very matte. It's really beautiful to do Greek keys and designs and things on painting seagrass or Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a stiff ma mm -hmm. material anyway. Mm -hmm. If you've got something that's more of a wool or 
cotton or poly blend that's got a thick nap to it. To paint that, it's just going to make it extremely stiff. Yeah. Um, I would probably suggest not doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, can you paint vinyl? Yes. Can you paint leather? Yes. And it does actually quite beautifully. It does really, really beautifully. Um, all right. So, and you, I've done a lot of videos and stuff on that as far as thinning it. If you are doing, um, if you are doing vinyl or leather, you really need to spray it. Would you not agree, baby? They need to spray vinyl. I don't. I don't yeah, want you I'm to thinking, get brush strokes. I'm thinking. Yeah. Did you answer the person's question that was talking about um, as far as base coating and painting and getting brush strokes mm -hmm. with the one step? Mm -hmm. Did you handle that? I did that when you went outside. Was dealing with a dog. Smoke break. All right. So Lisa's. We don't smoke, by the way. Um, Lisa's saying a very elementary education in wood, not a master's course. No pressure. I think that the easiest way to might be able to do that is to one go to a really good estate sale. Mm -hmm. We could really talk to them about that mm -hmm. and periods mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. styles, and we'll talk about mm -hmm. wood. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then maybe our little place over on Summer Avenue. Yeah, that's not going to be the place to go. It's a now, flea market. I will. It is more of a flea market, and I love it there because I can get stuff really yeah, inexpensive. Yeah. I mean, they've got good finds. It's but if you're talking about a quality, and we would have to go to an, an a truly an antique, and like an estate sale an estate that has some sale, good antique antiques in Midtown. Store, yeah, there's not as many antique stores as there used to be. Yeah, there's really not. And you know, if you um, here's what's kind of fun. You can get some in, some inspirations on First Dibs, which is a great antique site online who would have ever thought we'd be buying furniture and stuff like this online mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. never consignments yes never would have mm -hmm. never would have thought mm -hmm. but you can go to first dibs and here's what's really funny our furniture's on there did mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cherish is a great site um but our furniture as will pop up some of our older pieces um from a long time ago will pop up there so i guess that means we're antiques baby mm -hmm. yeah we're we, we made we're antiques, antiques. All right, guys. So thank you so much for popping on. We're going to be doing this every Wednesday. So did I tell you that? No. <laughs> I want my $20 now. <laughs> so I told Jean, I was like, I know you never have time to do this when we're at the office during the day. We, we never have time. So I was like, guess what? We're going to be able to do this from home. I'll come and I'll bring it and I'll just put it up on the, we're in our kitchen. And um, that way you can have <laughs> He's a real trooper. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's a real trooper. But, no, we, we love and appreciate you guys so much. We love Thank the fact that you, you are guys. our tribe because we love redoing furniture. We, yes. love, we, we love redoing homes. A lot of you don't know, but we've moved 14 times mm -hmm. because we flip houses. Oh, I thought it was because we couldn't pay the bills. <laughs> so it allows us to be able to... Um, show you kind of how we've done it. Like we've painted kitchen cabinets and floors and walls and the whole, the gamut mm -hmm. um, over the years in doing this. So um, yes, I agree, Corey. I love our tribe. We're going to be doing this on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we, um, can we have a Rena Jean weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making his day, Jamie. <laughs> I did have an offer to go to the Bahamas to do a plaster job. <laughs> That's a true story. That was just somebody lately, wasn't it? it was. We had a client, or no, we had a customer a feed him now. Carlotta says you earned it. <laughs> Actually, we got some chicken soup at a great little Mexican place here in town, um, and that was our dinner tonight mm -hmm. with some chicken soup. It was good. It was really good, really tasty. I but know better, Carlotta. I would never ask him to do this if he had not eaten. Um, so, um, Stephen, we have to answer Stephen's question. Mm -hmm. um, can you paint cane with one step or milk paint? Paint cane. If... Oh, I would want to know what is the cane. Let's say uh, the cane, a cane back in a chair. Well, I need to know because he may be wanting to do that. Is is it a, is it a, um, is it a table or is it a chair? Uh, is it something that's going to be sat in and used? 
because milk paint will not be as durable a finish as the one step paint. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with Jean Howard for a second because those little cane chairs that I bought at the antique mall but and they had walnut we under them. We didn't sit in them. Not all the time. They were they pretty were they were pretty at. they were pretty um they were pretty fancy little chairs. No, we didn't send them. But the walnut cut color. The cane out of the no, seat. that was the bed a long time ago. No, he did the seat chair. One of them. Of too. that one too. Mm -hmm. yes. So, um, but you can put the milk paint directly on top of it, and then I sealed it with the wax. But I distressed it just a little bit and pulled that cane, so I saw the darker cane underneath, and I saw the milk paint underneath. I mean, on top, and it was fabulous. Um, it's chair cane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Well, you know. I like the melt paint on top of it. I think it's fab. I mm -hmm. think it's a fabulous, fabulous mm -hmm. finish. And then wax on top of it and buff it, and it looks amazing. I'm sorry. I look when I know that I'm dis when I'm disagreeing with the master. I look over at him, and it's like <laughs> disdain because we we definitely have a difference of opinion on some of that. I'll push the I'll you've push gotta, the envelope. You've got to paint it with one step first, anyway. No, you don't. I didn't. I cheated. And it's in my book. I did the, the chairs I'm talking about. Because you didn't sit in the chairs. They were just pretty. accent pieces. True, yeah, true. If we didn't sit in it, <laughs> if we don't sit in it, can we do it? Yes, yes. the answer is yes. Yeah. Yes, it will look beautiful. Yes. And knowing you, Stephen, because I know you're just a, you're such a faithful, sweet, um, uplifting um, follower of this page, that you probably have the Rescue, Restore, Redecorate book, which, by the way, I will say this, just got translated into Russian. Das Vendanya. <laughs> just my book just got translated into Russian. How cool is that? Um, true story. Um, so I go to see my parents. My parents are 101 and 98. My dad's 101, my mom's 98. So I go in and I'm really excited. I'm like, guess what? I just found out my book is being translated into Russian and it's being distributed throughout Russia. And my dad is, why? Wow. Because <laughs> they're gonna, they're we gonna. always ask <laughs> such deep, deep, Philosophical Here, questions. <laughs> Here I'm just going to my parents and I'm wanting some just affirmation. Um, some affirmation from my parents. And it was like, what What do they need in Russian for? Anyway, I thought that was funny. All right, guys. That So stay tuned. We're going to be doing this um, every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock when I can grab Gene Howard, make sure that he's eaten. And we'll come in the kitchen or we'll go in another area of the house and hope that the dogs will behave themselves. So we just wanna come along this journey with you and educate you and um, uh, maybe entertain you with your with your sarcasm. Connie's from, uh, parents were from Russia. Oh my gosh, how cool. So she knows what Desvendanya means. Yeah. Um, that's the only Russian we know. <laughs> um, but anyway, but it's gonna be an exciting journey and we will make a point um, you're so welcome, Carol. We will make a point um, uh, of going to some estate sales and the things. If we go to one that we know it's good stuff, then we'll just pop on and we'll do a Facebook Live because we want to educate you. We want to come along beside you and um, and just make this journey more enjoyable. We, we enjoy rescuing and restoring furniture and making homes more beautiful and inexpensive mm -hmm. because you can definitely enjoy the bragging rights when you get it cheap makes it a lot more fun. All right, guys, have a great night. Um, enjoy the debate if you're up to it. And um, I think I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. <laughs> Feed the dogs. They'll be happy and quiet. That's a great word. Y'all are awesome. Have a great night, everybody. They eat too much as it is. <laughs>